It tastes very sugary. Elena, the sample you brought today tastes sugary, darker, and it is different from others. Really? That is very strange. I haven't had a sip either. Are you sure you are using the right recipe? Yes, we are using the right recipe, which is what is meant for the product we are running. Are you sure 1,000 gallon of water was added? From the HMI, the gallon count elapsed before I took the sample. The color of the product look a little bit different. The color look a little bit dull. Probably, it might be due to the direction that the glass is facing. Who knows if it is shadow casting? Elena, let's have a look at the differential pressure transmitter. That way, we will be on a safer side. All right. This things happens in industries. Differential pressure transmitter is an important equipment in process setup. Because this equipment determine the quality of the product. So basically, during blending and mixing activities. Machine designer put a lot of things into considerations when designing fluid processing equipments. For example, when 2,000 gallons of fluid is allowed to flow through a differential pressure transmitter. The transmitter will begins to count the volumetric flow rate of the fluid. So basically, we only need 1,500 gallons for this product before the inlet valve closes. The volumetric flow rate of the fluid is converted to electric signals. And the signal will be sent to the PLC. The PLC will monitor the flowing signal coming from the transmitter. And decision will be made when the preset values are attained. Examples. To stop the process pump and close the inlet valves. But in a situations where there are malfunctions. The required volume might not be attained or might be exceeded. This error depend on the state of the transmitter. So basically, in a situations where the transmitter is not accurate, we might either have less or more fluid during blending and mixing of process products. This is one of the contributing factors that can affect the quality of the product produce. Before removing the transmitter, there is need to close the inlet valves and subsequently drain the tank before removing the transmitter. Elena Please close the inlet valves. Now that the inlet valve has been closed and the tank has been drained. To be on a safer side, there is need to reduce pressure within the tank to a safe working pressure. The excess air within the tank will be vented to the atmosphere. The closing of the inlet valve and the draining of the tank couple with the venting of the excess pressure is to prevent further injuries and damage to equipment when removing the transmitter. Now there is need to check the behavior of the transmitter. We will need to see if the transmitter value, that is the current signals supplied at varying pressure is within the accepted range as per the transmitter documents. In a situation where the transmitter value is not within the accepted range. There will be a need to recalibrate the transmitter. Which is basically. Adjusting and varying the zero and span of the transmitter. At zero pressure. Which is when water is not flowing within the pipe. The transmitter current is 3.45 milliamperes. When the pressure is set to 25 inch of water column. 
The current signals is 4.1 mA. When the pressure is set at 50 inch of water column, the current signals is 7.4 mA. When the pressure is set at 75 inch of water column, the current signals is 11.5 mA. And finally, when the pressure is set at 100 inch of water column, the current levels up at 18.6 mA. Now let compares all these value with the transmitter documents. As we can see, the current signal is far from what is expected as per manufacturer requirement. Again let plot all these values on a graph for better understanding. As we can see from the graph, the current state of the transmitter is far from the range that is specified by manufacturer. Hence there is need for recalibrations. We connect our pressure source once again. Again the pressure source must be accurate. Because this will be the baseline of the transmitter behavior after it has been returned to the field. Again, we will also connect the digital multimeter in series with the transmitter. This is where the reading that is generated by the transmitter will be gotten. Now let calibrate our transmitter. The first part of the calibration process is zero trim. This will be the behavior of the transmitter when fluid is not flowing within the pipe. So basically, the plan is to vary the current signals from 3.45 mA to 4 mA. Which is the current we want the transmitter to send to the PLC when the pipe is empty. Now, we will need to regulate the equalizer valves in such a way that the high and low side of the transmitter will experience equal pressure or zero deferential value. Now we will vary the span until the current supplied by the transmitter level up from 3.45 mA to 4 mA. After which we will zero the transmitter at this current point. Now let calibrate the upper operating limit of the transmitter. The equalizing valve will be varied in such a way that the pressure supplied will only be supplied to the high side of the transmitter. We will now need to apply the pressure that is equal to 100 inch of water column to the transmitter. Now the current coming from the transmitter is 18.6 mA. We will now vary the span until the transmitter level up at 20 mA. We will mount the transmitter on the process pipe. Now let authenticate the calibrated transmitter. All the valves will be at closed conditions. We will now open the equalizing valves. We will also slowly open the high pressure valves. After which, we will close the equalizing valves and open the low pressure valves. Now when there is no liquid flow, the current gotten is 4 mA. When the valves is open halfway, which is to allow 50 inch of water column to flow. The current gotten is 10.02 mA. Again, where the valves is further open slightly. That is when 75 inch of water column is allowed to flow within the pipe. The current gotten is 15 mA. Finally, when the water inlet valves is open to its maximum, that is to allow 100 inch of water column to flow with the pipe. The current gotten is 20 mA. Now, when we compare the value gotten with the stated value on the transmitter documents, we can see that the values matches, again for clarity sake. Let's plot this value on a graph. As we can see, 
The behavior of this transmitter matches the transmitter specification. So when compare the two graphs, which is before the transmitter was calibrated and after the transmitter was calibrated. We can see that there is a major difference. The previous graph is out of phase with transmitter specifications. However when compared the calibrated graph with the transmitter specifications. The graph is almost in phase with the transmitter specifications. Now what we just did is known as transmitter trimming. What we did was to trim off the transmitter in such a way that the current signal will be equivalent to the fluid flowing within a pipe. Hence, a well-functioning transmitter will improve the quality of the products produce. Because the current going to the PLC will represent reality. That is, when we allow 10 gallons of water to flow within a pipe, we will be getting 10 gallons of the output of the tank before the PLC closes the inlets valves of the process equipment. In the coming series, we will be looking at how to calibrate temperature transmitter couple with a demonstrated examples. Hope you have enjoyed today's series. See you in the next one.